Welcome to Inside Out Boards with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. Well, we are going to winterize an outboard motor and fog it and do all that stuff. Um, I've had a few people uh, subs request that I do a how do you winterize an old two-stroke outboard so I have one that I can do and so if you remember the 40 Enduro the one that was basically sold on the European market I've got it out here on a stand I was hoping to take it on a boat ride um, but the weather for the next week and a half two weeks is gonna be awful so and then I just happened to be gifted another 40 enduro Yamaha that uh, needs some work so I'm gonna go ahead and winterize the European marketed enduro that'll be the one that we winterize and then I'll bring the other enduro in here and we'll see if we can't square that one away when the weather gets better we we'll take that one for a ride so that's what we're gonna do also You remember the little 15 and last video I did that had the sp loaded lower unit. Um, I still got it right there. But this is the kind of date out of my bone pile. Uh, I'm going to pop the lower unit off of it and pop it on this other one if we get that far. So let's see. But that's the plan for this video. So let's get at it. Okay, so we're going to get to a winterizing this uh, outboard here and uh, I'm going to take you through the things that I think you should do if you're going to store your outboard for the winter especially if you're going to store it outside and if you do these things when you get ready to start up this spring she should start right up with no problem for you so uh, first I'm going to show you some of the, the things that I recommend you have on hand hopefully you'll have most of this stuff on hand and the stuff I'm going to show you is not brand specific and we'll go over that so let me get set up I'll be right back okay so I'll start right over here we got the Marvel mystery oil I'll tell you about that in a second we have star Tron fuel treatment okay We've got a couple of different fogging oils here. This one is Stabil fogging oil. Here's another one. This one is OMC storage fogging oil. Good stuff. We got some dielectric silicone compound. We got some anti seize we got some geese some regular old barren grease whatever kind you have on hand will do just fine some lubri plate 105 I'll tell you all about that as we go they make many different types of lower unit lubricants this one's Yama lube SAE 90, 80 weight 90, Marine Gear Case Lube. They make all sorts of it. Here's one Lubrimatic, high velocity, lower unit gear lube for all modern outboard and stern drive. So, brand specific, none of this stuff is. And then finally, there's this. Again, this is corrosion block. All right, kills the corrosion on contact. So, um, something along that line. So those are the things you're going to need to get started. And we're going to start right at the bottom and go right to the top. Okay, first thing we're going to do is take out the uh, the oil level top screw. You can see how 
milky this one looks. Now, when you take out the actual drain screw, when you first take it out, you want to look and see if you see any clear water. Because remember, oil floats on top of water. So if there's any clear water that hasn't been emulsified yet, it'll be right at the first few couple teaspoons that come out. You can see this one has had water in it at some point. Hopefully it's just the seals and hasn't been done in a hundred years. Okay, so we're going to drain that lower unit. Alrighty. Alright, while that's draining, I'm going to take off the propeller. I already took out the, the key. Cotter pin. And then there's my thrust washers and all, and the nut. Just like that's how they came off. All right. Now, as it's not been a long time since I've put the propeller on this uh, engine, my grease there still looks good. But still, in your case, and in any case, you should. Get that old grease off. Take you some intake cleaner, some brake clean, what have you, and get as much of the old grease off as you can. And just clean it up good. There we go. Get that old geese off of there, because you're going to put brand new. All right. So get the old grease off, and like I said, intake cleaner, brake clean, something along that line. We'll do the trick. Then you come in with your new grease, geese, geese, and liberally lather it up. Get some on the threads too, okay, get some on the thrust washer, spin it over, put some more on there. Now one thing I do like to do, and I'll show you that, all right. Now we got some geese all over that thing. Looking good. Looking good, oh man. I like to pull this back washer forward. And right in there, because when, when and if they're gonna get stuck from running in salt water, it's gonna be right up against there. So I like to take a blob of anisees and put on the back side of this washer rather than regular grease. Put you some good anisees right there. There you go. Because if they seize on, that's where it always happens, it seems like. Okay. So that's all there is to that. And let's get the old propeller back on. And take our washers and so forth. Back on. All righty. Gonna just let that uh, lower unit or drain for a bit and come back and fill her up. That's good, that's all you need it. There we go. So we got that all good greased up. We got the lower unit oil drain. Okay, as we go up the engine, you can take your grease. And there's places along the line that you should kind of pay attention to. Especially on the Asian motors, any of the Japanese, you know, 
Hondas, Yamahas, doesn't matter whether it's four stroke, four stroke, two stroke. Let's come up here. But right in here you got your lower unit disassembly coupling. Clean that up with a little wire brush. I don't even know if I'm in there. Yeah, I am. Clean that up real good with a wire brush. And come back over here, take your anises, and give that a little bit on each side of the threads there. Okay? All right. And then, uh, all your mechanisms here, it doesn't hurt to take just a little bit of fresh grease and put in there. Just, just a little wherever you see moving parts. Put some in there. Put in the geese. Alrighty. Now, on some motors you will, and on some motors you won't have grease zerks. If you have grease zerks, Use them. Put some fresh grease in them zerks. Okay. Let me lower this thing down a little bit. Power head. Okay. One of the first things you want to do is just get some regular soap and water, whatever kind you like. It don't matter. This is simple green. I got it in a Rain X bottle, but it's simple green. Just give it a few squirts like that. Don't have to be nothing overboard. Just get some regular soap and water. And get on there. And then once you do that, get your rag. And just wipe things down. Get some of that salt off of there. You know. You know. Just wipe it down. Just, you know, you ain't got to go crazy. Crazy. Just wipe it down. Get some of that salt and stuff with a little soap and water. That bottle I have is mixed, uh, simple green, 50-50 soap and water. So just get in here and get any yuck, crud, salt. This thing's just pretty clean because I ain't done a whole lot with it since I serviced it. But yeah, just wipe it down with some soap and water. I've got these kind that screw in. Like that. That's for an OMC. This one's for the Yamaha. I've got a few others. But anyway, I just pump. I got a pump handle here. I pump. Because this oil's been out in my Conics, it's a little bit cold, so it's going, I'm going to go slow with it. Okay. Now that I've got about five or six pumps, I like to take this. The Luber plate number 105. It is an engine assembly of grease. It is meant for when you rebuild an engine, when you go to start it up cold, it doesn't allow any damage to happen to that engine. Um, it's a super thin um, engine assembly grease. And I've had, like I said, the best tech I ever knew on outboards um, who had went to many schools told me about this stuff and he goes on these older engines he goes about halfway through your oil fill in your gear case um, especially if it's the old five piece gear case from the Evan Rube Johnson's of the 50s 60s and so forth he said about after five eight pumps shoot about two or three tablespoons of this into the gear case that way if water even gets in you're still going to be protected with this 
So that's what I do. And like I said, that's, that's preference, that's choice. That has, you do not have to do this. But if you got an older outboard, I recommend it. I shoot some up in there, it'll plug the hole so it don't come drain them back out at you. I'm a believer because I've seen the evidence up close and personal. So I put some of that in there. I even know old timers. One of them online, you can go to a good site, it's called Duckworth's. Um, he recommends it. Um, some of the old timers even run, they run it straight. I don't think I would do that, but they do. So now I will pump and fill it until that oil that I first put in starts to come out. So now I will pump and fill it until that oil that I first put in starts to come out. And I'm just using Napa brand gear oil here. Like I said, there's many on the market available. starts to come out this top hole, we'll know we're getting there. And even after it starts to come out that top hole, you want to give it a couple pumps, get any air that was in there out of there. can hear it now there it comes you can see it's got a little bit of lube plate in it now you just slowly do it slowly get some of them air bubbles right in there should be good now I would normally take my luber plate unscrew this squirt some luber plate in the hole and that'll plug the hole but we're gonna do it a couple different ways um, let me get new seals on these. I'll be right back. Alright. Alright, so I got me some new washers on there. That's, well, shit, I thought I did. Get on there. Alright, so what we're going to do now is go ahead and put the top one in. The overflow fulfill. Get that one good and snug. All right. Okay, now, like I said, I would normally just take my luber plate and stick it back in there and plug this hole. But if you're not going to use luber plate, what I recommend is have your screw ready. See this big blob of Vaseline here? Unscrew it. Get that on your finger. Unscrew it and put that blob of Vaseline before all your stuff runs out. All your earl. You plug that hole. Best you can anyway. And that way it'll hold that oil in there. Not much will come out anyway, but some will come out. It will. And by putting that old Vassum's petroleum jelly, it's once I find the actual right place to put it, a screw. There we go. So now we got uh, the oil change. We got some lubri plate. Little bit, little bit, just a little bit. Wipe everything down. Get everything all clean. Mm -hmm. And yes, I won't forget to put my cotter pin back in there. Okay, so the lower end's done now. Okay, 
Okay, now we're going to take the air silencer off of here. Take that puppy off. So now, like I said, there's many brands of engine storage fog. But what we're going to do is start this engine. I'm going to let it run. Then I'm going to unhook the gas and let it run for a little bit. But remember, I showed you these products. I've got good premium gas. I have some Marvel Mystery Oil in it. You can read the instructions on the back and it'll tell you how many per gallon there, right there in that little square. All right, how many ounces per gallon. And then I've got Startron. I've got good, fresh, premium gas in my six-gallon tank. So that's what we're starting with, is good, clean, fresh gas that is treated with a fuel stabilizer. And I like a little Marvel. I swear by this stuff. They don't pay me nothing. Okay, so we're going to start it. Let me open the door here. And uh, then I'm going to show you a couple other things I like to do. As it's running, I will as it's running, I will take two fingers and just pull this starter rope out. And then I will squirt it with just regular old lubricant, cheap lubricant, and let it go back in. I'll do that a couple times, lube that all up up under there. Um, so we're gonna do that as well. Okay, there's nothing left in that carb except for engine fogging oil residue. Same with the lower cylinder. Hopefully you saw how I was pulling that out with two fingers, lubing it, let it go back in. So, let me get the air silencer gasket and linkage back on. I'll be right back. Figure on these gaskets, I better showed you. I better showed you. Get you some Vaseline, put it on the gasket, that'll stop it from drying out, and then put a bunch around each screw hole. And that'll allow you to get that, that cover back on there. And the petroleum jelly only helps. Get in there. Then get your gamma, 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 gamma gasket. See, I got some on there too. Put that in there, get it lined up. That makes your gasket all moist and nice. Just then get your screws. Get a couple of them. I hooked up my choke linkage. 
And I get my screws. And then I put them in. To my gasket. Can't feel that hole. There it is. There it is. Same with this guy over here. Oh, I lost that one. Yeah, we got it back. And I get my screwdrivers. I should have my electric one over here, but oh hell. I'll get that in a moment, tails. Alright, so get your little gasolinos. Little petroleum jellyones. Hook that up on my choke. I could probably just get it done in there. Think I can, think I can. Take your spark plug wrench. Take out them spark plugs. Which I just did. Now what we're gonna do is take more of the engine fog. Don't matter what brand. Okay, storage fog. Now, take it up good, get it all mixed up. Into the cylinders it goes. Good one, two, three, four. Okay, do the same to the bottom. One, two, three, four. There you go. Now, I'm going to take that pull cord and gently just slowly pull it over. Get that stuff smearing all over them cylinders and pistons. There you go. That's good. Right there. Okay. Now, take your spark plugs. You don't have to do this either, but you're here. Why not? Just take a little bit of the aniseed. Put on the threads. I mean, just the smallest ever amount. Put on the thread. Put on the threads. Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? Put a little bit of that anti-smeeze. A little bit of that anti-smear on the threads. Ain't gonna hurt nothing. Ain't gonna hurt a thing. Put a little bit of that on there. Yeah. Same with this guy. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. A little bit of that anti-smear. See, just a little smidgen on there. And screw it in. Now, some people say, well, you should put new spark plugs in it. If you're going to do that, why let them sit out there all winter long? Put them in in the spring. Start them with the old ones after you start it up in the spring, let it run a little bit, then switch out to the new ones. I'm of the belief that the spark plug is the most non-engine causing problem on earth but is the most replaced part of an engine. I can't tell you how many good spark plugs have went to the boneyard and to the garbage for no good reason. Rarely do they go bad. Rarely. Now, we got them spark plugs off. Use it. Put some dielectric. Same as I always do. Dab on the ceramic, smear it. A teeny bit on the tip. A dab on the ceramic, smear it. A little on the tip. That'll let you get that spark plug boot off very easy next time. Okay. Then what I like to do. Take my little spark plug brush. It looks like that. Anything like that. And just come up in them boots. Make sure there's no rust up in there. This one needs a little bit bigger brush. I got one. I got one. Take a brush about like that. Just gently go up into them boots. These ones are nice and clean actually. 
So give them a little bit of wire brush, okay? On they go until they snap. Okay. Now, now, now what? Okay, we've cleaned the exterior with soap and water. We've done the lower unit. And uh, now what I like to do is actually take a little bit of triflow and spray all my linkages and stuff. Don't hose it down beyond belief. Just anywhere you got moving things like the choke, the linkage on the car, give it a little bit of triflow. Okay, now, often overlooked. Right here on the hood latch is a hole. It's meant for these little straws. Stick it down in that hole. Give it a good squirt. It'll get through there eventually. Then give that a good coat. Alright. We gave our linkage a good coat. One other place I like to give a little bit is right up under there. Give a good coat. All right. Now, the last product we'll use is this. Is the corrosion block. And you don't have to go all, I mean, totally King Kong with this stuff. Just shake it up real good. Got a rattling ball in there give her a coat. We're going to wipe it a little bit too. Same with up under there. Same on the front. Around the gear shift. Just a little. Just a little. Okay. Then you can take your little rag and actually spray a little on the rag. And give everything a good wipe. Give everything a good wipe. Everything. Give everything just a good wipe. Okay. Everything, everything. Boy, oh, you can smell all that love in there. That's what you want. I want some more up on that. Because I had a little. I want more up on that pool start. Because it's how you in and it gets all chalky. Unpainted aluminum. You understand. You understand. Make it look all pretty. Yeah. Make it look all pretty. Don't need no ugly on my eye, boy. Heck no. Don't need no ugly on my eye, boy. Wow. Now, something on these, you got to remember, a carburetor is an open air system. Um, so make sure the throttle is all the way down. And what I like to do is take me a piece of paper towel. And on this one, the intake is right at the bottom on that air silencer. You can see it right there. Where my finger is. That's the intake right in there. I like to take some of the storage fog, squirt it on this piece of paper towel liberally. Don't be cheap with it. Then I like to take me a screwdriver and shove it in that intake. You don't shove it way up in there. Just enough so that as air temperatures heat up and cool down, guess what? That intake is only breathing storage fog stuff. And leave you a piece out like that so you can see it when you go to start it up in spring. But I always do it so I, I don't worry about it. I get it in there like that. Uh, 
It's just something I like to do. You understand? Put that paper towel there. Now let it open air system and then make sure your throttle is in the idle position. Okay? Now there's that. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. Now I like to take some just cheap old rattle can lubricant spray of your choice. Hose her down. All over. Everywhere. Everywhere. Give her a good coat. Wipe her down with the rag again. Make it look beautiful, man. Make it look beautiful, yeah. Avant, it says. Get her all cleaned up. We ain't done yet, we ain't done yet. Get this, get that. Get this, get that. Clean her all up. Alright, she looks good. She looks cool, man. What's so. She's looking pretty good. She's looking pretty good. I'm liking it. Okay, something else we gotta do. Remember the geese? Remember the geese? I'll show you the geese. Eat your grease. Get a coat on them. Transom clamps. Run them in. Mm -hmm. Run them all the way in. You know you're getting it in there. Do the back side of them back in there. Good, good, yeah. There you go. Ease them up. Ease them up. Okay, same with this guy. He's already run down, so I just gotta do the inside. Get him all geased up. Back him right now. There you go. Get a coat on him. Get a coat on him. Did hook up my choke. <laughs> Ain't she? Isn't she lovely? That engine is now fogged, winterized, and ready to go for spring. This engine I'll put back out on my rack and after sitting there um, all winter long I should be able to put that on my boat and with a few pools she'll start right up, smoke a little bit and be ready to go fishing. I'll be right back. It's name Debt Tune. I'm like a fish out of water. I'm just a man in a hole. Those city lights turn my blues into gold. I'm like a fish out of water. I'm just a man in a hole. Those city lights turn my blues into gold. Name that too. Well, okay. So, we've got this here Yamaha 40 horsepower, two cylinder single carb enduro, all squared away, ready for to sit out there in the winter and 
the snow and the rain and the rain and the snow and the snow and the blow and the rain. And uh, she's good to go. This spring, when it's time to start this motor up, she should start right up. Everything's protected. Everything's safe. And so that's the full meal deal on uh, fogging and winterizing uh, one of these motors. There's not really a whole lot of difference between a four-stroke and a two-stroke. The only difference being that on a four-stroke you'll have an oil filter, an oil sump, and motor oil. You'll change that. You'll change just like you would on a car. You'll change the oil. Other than that, the lower unit's the same. All the uh, carbs are the same. The fogging process is the same. Um, so she's good to go. And that's how I winterize them. Uh, I've had a lot of subs ask me, you know, about fogging these motors and winterizing them and so forth. And it's really not that hard. Um, just get to it. You, if you could, if you could smell how good she smells, all the petroleums and everything saying, protect me, protect me, protect me. And that's what you want to do. You want to protect your investment. You want to stand. So, that's going to be a wrap on this one. And as always, that's one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass.